Hey, Matt Micucci. Hello. Hi, Brian. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody watching. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, as you know from the title, this is, of course, our 10 albums, our monthly 10 albums you need to know installment. This one being for the month of November 2020. So closing in on the end of the year. And yeah, still a lot of really good music being made, man. Oh, man. Yeah, you seem absolutely. Good. <laughs> La siren. <laughs> Not That's right. from that siren. I don't know. I don't know if you can hear it, but every time we start recording, there's a siren going off somewhere. Maybe it's just telling people, you know, tune in because Jazz is is live. <laughs> exactly. That's our Jazz is siren. But no, man, you're always in the middle of the action over there. Um, yeah, we should mention I'm Brian Zimmerman, <laughs> executive editor of Jazz is Magazine. You are, of course, Matt Micucci, online editor of uh, Jazz is Magazine. And you are largely responsible for putting this list together. We'll go into our standard Sorry. disclaimer. For, <laughs> no, no apologies, Matt. Uh, no, this is a really good list this time around. Uh, they're all really good lists, but um, this was a bountiful harvest. We'll give it a Thanksgiving theme. There you go. Um, yeah, we should mention these are, of course, we listen to so much music every month, and there are so many great albums coming out every month. Um, you know, these aren't necessarily our favorites per se, uh, or the best per se, because like I said, there's just there's just so much great music. These are just 10 albums we think are noteworthy that should be on your radar that you may definitely want to check out or listen to on whatever streaming service um, uh, you happen to be subscribed to or, or purchase if uh, you are so inclined. But that's our standard disclaimer before every list. And uh, Matt, like I said, it's a really good one. By the way, we should mention this, um, this feature is something we regularly do on our website once a month yeah. it's a text article 10 albums you need to know for november 2020 you got george benson up there because his new album is included in this list not to give any spoilers away uh but yeah you can read this on our site right now along with a bunch of other um content as well as exclusive subscriber only content so head on over to jazzes.com to check it out but matt without further ado what do you say we get into uh get into this month's list Connection, internet connections permitting, we'll get through it all right. And we'll try to keep it short and sweet because uh, there's a lot to get through and we don't want to get stuck. All right, let's get into it. Uh, Matt, first album on our list is, okay, this is a cool one. This is a special release from Verve Records, came out November 6th. It's from Dave Brubeck. Okay, yeah. so this is material from the Dave Brubeck archive. Uh, the name of the album is called Lullabies. And like I said, released November 6th on Verve Records. Let me go ahead and pull this up. Uh, there you have it. There's the album cover. Yeah. What can you tell Beautiful. us about this one, Matt? Yeah. Well, I mentioned this album in our previous episode of Crate Digging, actually, from last week. So I'll just briefly go through it again. This is obviously highly anticipated. It's the final studio uh, recording by Dave Brubeck, a sublime collection of beautiful, yet sometimes even a little haunting and dark, uh, solo interpretations of children's songs, standards and improvisations, finally seeing the light of day uh, for the first time since it was recorded in 2010, and a beautiful way, of course, to prepare for next month's official celebrations for the 100th anniversary of Brubeck's birth. That's right. You know, times are a little tense right now. We're all a little stressed out, having some trouble sleeping. Uh, and not to say that this album is going to put you to sleep, but it's very calming, very relaxing. And uh, yeah, the, Verve has already started to put out some music videos um, for yeah. this album that you can check out uh, right now. Uh, they're on YouTube. And yeah, just, you know, very peaceful music. Um, Brahms Lullaby, Over the Rainbow. Um, again, not sleepy time jazz by any sense of the word. But again, like if you're a little stressed, having trouble unwinding, maybe put on this album. It'll put you in a much, much better mood. Um, and it's Dave Brubeck, just an impeccable impeccable pianist uh just great touch on the keyboard and yeah this is a great one to kick off the list uh by the way matt 
we'll say hello to everyone tuning in. Lavinia, super fan. Lavinia, hello to you too. Yeah, this is going to be a good list. And when you start off with Dave Brubeck, uh, that's how you know it's going to be an epic list. So we'll move yeah. right on down the 10 albums on to number two. Matt, that would be a new album on ECM Records. It too came out yeah. November 6th by the Bandonion maestro Dino Saluzzi. Yeah, uh, so it's interesting that this month's list kicks off with <laughs> with uh, so many solo recordings. Uh, very interesting to know. Um, uh, not all intentional, of course. It's our list is in chronological order. But anyways, ECM obviously has a, a great catalog of such recordings, and their latest edition is one by Argentinian bandoneon maestro Dino Saluzzi in a latest intersection of uh, tango, jazz, and improvisation. It's a collection of songs. He would define them as sketches. And actually, these songs uh, testify to his reputation as a storyteller as well. He definitely has a way of conveying narratives and deep emotions within his music. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Mandonion is a type of concertina, so very much in the accordion family. Um, but Dino Saluzzi, because this is a, a solo Mandonion recording. Um, he has a really kind of orchestral approach to this instrument. You hear a lot of counter melody. Uh, you lot. Uh, you hear a lot of interesting counterpoint. It really sounds like it's more than one Mandonion player at a time. Or even again, think a beautiful orchestral orchestral arrangement, or just like a a a, a really like two handed piano. He really adds a lot of volume, a lot of space. There's a lot of presence to his playing. So uh, whatever you're thinking about solo accordion, a solo bandoneon. Uh, Dino takes it into another dimension. I mean, the things he's doing, it's almost like a surround sound effect. Very cool album from Dino. So uh, happy to include yeah. this one on the list as well. All right, Matt, we'll move right on down the list. Um, this one, God, we got the advance on this album probably at the end of last month. Oh. And I've been spinning it pretty much nonstop. I feel like I've been listening to this thing forever. It's the latest from pianist Fred Hirsch. Uh, the new album is called Songs from Home, and it was released on November 6th on uh, Palmetto Records. So I'll go ahead and pull up the album cover for us. There it is. Well, I'll let you talk about it more than me then, because it seems like you've really been uh, been digging it as of late. I love it too. I mean, I you know, Fred Hirsch is one of the musicians who soothes us from his home during the pandemic period, especially in the intense early stages when we didn't know what was happening. So we really needed his music. You know, he was doing that via live stream performances. Certainly, Songs for Home is a collection of 10 songs where he does uh, much of the same, you know, via originals and covers perfor performed uh, all on his own. And uh, this is a format that he really excels in. It's a perfect antidote for the times that we're living in. Perfect music. Absolutely. By the way, mind is time watching, joining in from Kansas. Hello to you. And um, yeah, this album reminded me of one of my favorite Keith Jarrett albums, which is the Melody at Night with You, um, right. in that it was kind of born from a uh, struggle or challenge you know melody at night was with you was recorded by keith jarrett while he was uh recuperating from chronic fatigue syndrome kind of took to his piano to figure things out and you know kind of pour his emotion into the keyboard and fred hurst did something similar here with uh, a challenge a struggle we were all familiar with which is covid19 and the covid19 mm -hmm. lockdowns um so he took to his piano during this time he was re releasing uh, songs from this album uh, sporadically throughout uh, this period of time. And really they're favorites of his from the pop canon, um, from the jazz canon. Uh, it was noteworthy that Fred turned 65 during this, like a lot of us, he celebrated a birthday during these lockdowns. And again, you feel so mm -hmm. distant, much like this home at the end of the pier on the album cover. He was at home, but he felt so alone, so disconnected from everyone. So he figured he'd release these songs as a way to connect. So again, a lot of his favorites on there, When I'm 64, you know, by Paul McCartney is on there. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a, Beautiful album. Fred said a quote, something to the effect that these songs are comfort food um, with a little bit of badassery. It's, it's here. It is. It's kind of a comfort food album. He said with a little bit of badass stuff in there too. I didn't want to make an easy listening record, but I did want to play some music that would make people happy. Um, 
and yeah, that's that's exactly what he does. Really great intimate sound there on his home piano. And again, about his home piano, he says, you know, like me, it's got big personality, but it's not perfect. So you're really just hearing the personality of this piano, this personality of Fred Hirsch, who's one of my favorite pianists of all time. And yeah, just a great record for right now. Fred Hirsch, Songs From Home, highly recommended. All right, Matt. Let's go ahead and move on down the list. All right, took up a lot of time there. Um, but this is another good. We're, you're right. We're <laughs> noticing a theme here, Matt. Solo, um, some duo stuff, yeah. some trio stuff. So, yeah, this right. next one is a duo piece um, from vocalist Sarah Elizabeth Charles and uh, pianist Jarrett Cherner. It's called Tone, and it was released November 6th on Bald yeah. Hill Records. And, yeah, let me go ahead and pull up the album cover. There you go. Take it away, Matt. What can you tell us about this album? I guess what what I what I just it kind of occurred to me while looking at this list, we're starting to see music that has been recorded during the lockdown period as well. I mean, people recording music from from home, uh, and especially in the form of solo and duo albums. We'll be seeing uh, some more coming out in the next few uh, months, even. And uh, yeah, this is great. It's actually the the duo uh, they. Uh, debut of this vocal piano uh, duo. And again, like many recordings that have emerged during these times, it was recorded in their Brooklyn home. But the songs actually were put together over a period of uh, four years, I believe. So this might be the reason for the subtle yet uh, sophisticated arrangements, including really interesting uh, multi-track vocals by uh, Sarah Elizabeth Charles. So it's another great album, a very intimate and warm album. Again, this is a theme, recurring theme, I guess, for this list, but we'll see it. Uh, albums that are different, but I must say about this album that it's definitely some more music for the times that we're living in. Yeah, I love the pairing of voice with piano. Um, you know, I, listening to this album, there's a, Sarah has a way of really pulling out the poetry of the lyrics. Uh, you know, I guess it's a matter of her pacing, um, you know, but she's just got a beautiful way of interpreting lyrics. These are all original tunes. And the kind of uplift I got, um, that kind of poetic spiritual uplift I get from this music, kind of giving me almost a Carol King vibe, um, you know, but Sarah has an awesome jazz pedigree as well. Um, great soul she's done some you know soul influences funk influences on previous record and previous records and she brings all of that um to this recording which again recorded at home like you said it's as we look back in time uh you know at this point on the timeline we're going to see a, a noticeable shift in how music was made and disseminated so uh yeah this is a great one from sarah elizabeth charles Matt, you're giving me a concerned, mm -hmm. frozen face there. Do we still have you? You still connected? No, I, I'm here, <laughs> but I, I was noticing some to connect to connection issues uh, going on. And uh, I guess yeah, this is what we got to work with things today. From home. But, uh, exactly, exactly. This is how it's done <laughs> these days. What? How annoying are these internet connections? Is that, the worst thing about it is we can't do anything about it. Something in the I air know. sometimes. It we're just prevents the, us from doing our thing. We're the of the internet providers. That's right. Um, anyway, we'll go ahead and try to barrel on through the list here. We're going to change directions with this next album on our list. It is from the jazz fusion powerhouse Yellow Jackets. Um, they are joined here, emboldened here by the WDR big band out of Germany for their latest album, Jackets XL, which was released November 6th on Mac Avenue Records. So yeah, really cool Thanks. album here. What can you tell you us about Jackets all, XL? Brian. You've said it all, right? I have a tendency to do that. that. Something <laughs> for something completely different. <laughs> you know, as opposed to the intimate recordings, which we opened the show with, we moved on to a record featuring an expanded version of fame fusion band, Yellow Jackets. And here they revisit compositions from their acclaimed repertoire, but we've got some uh, new stuff in there as well. I believe there's two new compositions, or at least unreleased compositions, featuring, like you said, Germany's W. DR Big Band, equally celebrated, and led, of course, by Bob Mincer, who is a longtime Yellow Jacket himself. Uh, so, yeah, we're moving on to different territory, but still great, great music. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's called Jackets XL, we should mention, because they're going into their 40th year of making music as Yellow Jackets, four decades of jazz fusion. It's also their 25th studio album, a lot of history with this group. Uh, they are the cover subject of our November digital issue, which you can read on our site right now. It is locked to subscribers, so it's a subscriber um, only exclusive. You can sign up to be a digital subscriber right now, though, for just 99 cents per month for three months, you'll unlock access to this story and countless others. Uh, uh, the cover story is a long range Q and A with Russell Ferrante, um, keyboardist of Yellow Jackets and, you know, the longest tenured member of, of this current group. Um, so yeah, if you're into classic Yellow Jackets canon, which I certainly am, and I know Matt certainly is too, you got to scoop this record. This is a must pick up celebrating 40 years. Um, Matt, Let's yeah. go ahead and move on down the list again. Uh, oh God, this is this is an absolute groover <laughs> here. Super excited to see this one on the list. Let me pull up the image. Oh, no. It would be the <laughs> one, one is the it? only George Benson. Uh, this oh. is the latest album, a live album, Weekend in London. It was released ah. November 13th on uh, <laughs> Mascot Provogue Records. And uh, yeah, George Benson, the maestro. What the maestro. can you tell us about this one? That's just, I, I don't know. I, you, you, no, you haven't said it all this time. Let me tell you a little <laughs> more about it. No, no, uh, this is great. I mean, we've said many times in the past few videos um, how vital it is to have great live recordings in these times of quarantine. Uh, but it's also just great to hear John Benson uh, playing, doing his thing live, but also just playing at a more intimate uh, venue rather than the larger theaters or venues that he's obviously well used to playing. Here he's playing at Ronnie Scott's in uh, London. Mm -hmm. And he's interacting, you can hear him interacting with audiences, just digging the vibes of the place. Uh, it's a different energy that he gets from it, really comes alive. Uh, and he's performing hits, but also songs from his acclaimed repertoire that are not as well known. And really a beautiful collection of live music by one of the greatest guitarists and singers um in the biz yeah absolutely i saw george benson in uh montreal for the montreal jazz fest um you know and that was in front of a huge crowd of course the guy still brought the energy you know even though he's in his 80s he wouldn't know it um still very Good. much brought the energy i can only imagine what it would be like to see him in a more intimate venue like ronnie scott's which is like more of a traditional jazz club uh and this is the audio version of that so uh again we're all kind of stuck inside if you need that live experience this is a great album to turn to plus i mean give me the night i don't think grooves get much deeper than that moody's mood for love is on there there i go there i go you don't want to hear me sing it so go ahead and buy the album so you can hear george sing it um yeah a really it's great perfect. album and george benson live can't go wrong um so definitely had to make the list all right matt Let's scooch on down the list of the list once more. Uh, this is yeah. a cool release from Blue Note Records. Um, it too was released November 13th, so it came out last week. The latest from the Nels Klein Singers. Their new album is called Share the Wealth. Um, and yeah, Nels Klein, let me pull that up for you. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Uh, well, that. yes, trailblazing guitarist Nels Klein. Uh, <laughs> no, he's great. He's very influential within the avant-garde uh, spectrum of jazz. Returns with a new album, part of his Nels Klein Singers project, which always kind of makes me smile <laughs> because it's an instrumental outside the lines jazz group. Of course, no actual singers in it, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah. but it's so. I mean, the music here. I mean, so. Uh, here actually it's it's an expanded version because um i guess they're most uh, they're more famous as a, a trio uh but uh this is a new double album certainly includes as i mentioned in the article actually some of his most swirling sonic explorations yet if you want to like listen to music that is like something that you feel like you've never heard before or something that takes you to strange places uh this is it uh share the wealth um but you know as with everything nels Klein does 
a little outside the lines, just like you said, a little left of center, but nothing too inaccessible. Um, and we should sh shout out the performers, uh, the players on this album. Uh, that would be Skerrick on saxophone, Brian Marcello on keyboards, Trevor Dunn on bass, Scott Amandola on drums, and Ciro Baptista, a uh, super versatile player on percussion. Um, so yeah, absolutely not a vocal album. I was just testing you, <laughs> keeping you on your toes uh, from the Nels Klein singers. All right, Matt, let's go ahead to a newly yeah. formed trio. That would be here. Let me get us back to this view here. Uh, newly formed trio featuring Will Vinson uh, on saxophone, Gilad Hexelman on guitar, and Antonio Sanchez on drums. Uh, together, they are Trio Grande, and their new album is a self-titled one, Trio Grande. It was released November 13th on Whirlwind Records. And let me go ahead and pull that album cover up for you there. What can you tell us about this one, Matt? Cool title. I like that title, Trio Grande. Just add a letter to to a to a word. Well, that's two words, and it changes its meaning in, in a way. Big trio. This is exciting. It's a debut statement of a new trio of musicians, each an acclaimed band leader uh, in his own right, with distinctive characters and personalities. I mean, we know them. They're saxophonist Will Vinson, guitarist Gilad Exelman, and drummer Antonio Sanchez. It's always exciting to see such strong personalities kind of meet in music, but especially exciting when it works. And here the music definitely works. I mean, you uh, hear the meeting of different uh, styles and approaches, personalities, characters, as I said, but also different cultural backgrounds. Uh, they come together to create something truly that truly stands out uh, in you know the today's jazz landscape, let's say. So much so that it's uh, almost difficult to categorize. And to me, that sounds like another reason why this album definitely fits in with the 10 albums you need to know about for this month. Yeah, all of these players are, you know, I've listened to Will Vinson a lot, especially in the Owl Trio. And he's just, all of these players are so unconventional. You know, in jazz or what musicians describe as lick players, they rely on a lot of conventional musical language. Um, these guys are all super original, so you won't hear a lot of convention. You won't hear a lot of stock licks. You, This is totally unexpected music, music that will take your ear in unexpected directions. And uh, yeah, a cool entry uh, in, into new trio music with Trio Grande. So I, I hope to see more from this band uh, in the future. Uh, next, Matt. Geez, can't believe it. It's not even oh. Thanksgiving yet, but we're already talking Christmas music. So, uh, but you know, that doesn't bother me bother me a bit because I happen to love Christmas music. Uh, and especially when it comes from a phenomenal musician like Jamie Cullum. Uh, mm. The latest is The Piano Man at Christmas. Um, it's the latest from Jamie Cullum, and it will be released November 20th on Island Records. All right, Matt. What's the deal with Tis Jamie? The season. Later? That's right. Tis the season of Christmas-themed albums. <laughs> We're going to see a lot of them coming out. Some have already come out. Uh, but unlike so many others you'll see coming out, um, or generally see coming out around this time, let's be honest, Jamie Cullum's one is an all-original program. Ten originals written by him performed with a big band of no fewer than 57 musicians. So it's a very ambitious and large-scale project. Who knows? One of the tracks in this album may become a new... A Christmas standard. But certainly the exciting thing uh, for me, aside from the fact that it's Jamie Cullum and we all love him, is the fact that we're getting new Christmas music to celebrate <laughs> the most wonderful time of the year. It sounds strange to say that in 2020, but fingers crossed. In any case, if you're looking for a fresh way to kind of celebrate this time, uh, the Piano Man at Christmas is the way to go. Yeah. I mean, Christmas is going to be a little different this year for everybody. So, you know, in addition to your classic Vince Guaraldi, uh, why not mix some Jamie Cullum into your jazz Christmas playlist? Um, you know, you can count, you can rely on Jamie Cullum just, you know, to bring the groove, to bring some serious songwriting, um, to be unique, to be fresh. And uh, all of that applies to his latest uh, Christmas album. The Piano Man at Christmas. So yeah, be on the lookout for that coming November 20th. All right, and that'll bring us to the final album on the list, Matt. Uh, we're going to stick with The Piano Man. This one is yeah. Eric Reed and his latest for Smoke Sessions record. The new album is For Such a Time as This, and it will be released November 27th. So 
me go ahead and pull up this album cover. There we are. What can you tell us about Eric Reed's latest for such a time as this? Uh, it's a great album to end with because I've, I've just realized now that uh, we've had so many great uh, piano uh, players, musicians sort of in this list. So it's a great way to end this. Obviously, Eric Reed, great pianist. And uh, this album is certainly among those that seem to have been recorded in response to the hectic times that we're living in. Uh, so you hear that in the intensity of the music. Uh, but aside from that, aside from reflecting times that we're living in, I think this album uh, for such a time as this, actually the title actually fits with what I just said. I just realized it there. I mean, I, I must be going a bit crazy myself in these times. Anyways, uh, this is an album that sort of brings all the elements that he's known for. You know, you've got his hard driving swing, uh, daring expression, sophistication, and elegance, all of that stuff right there. Uh, Eric Reed's new album, great way to end the list. Yep. A uh, little backstory for this album. You know, Eric relocated from New York back to Los Angeles, um, his hometown, I think in February, March. So really before the yeah. door slams on this lockdown, um, had an idea, had an idea to create this album. Um, and it didn't, he didn't let the lockdown deter him. So he went out and, and recorded a socially distanced cdc approved recording session uh with some great musicians uh kevin canner on drums uh chris lewis on saxophone and alex bonham on bass um a lot of originals and a lot of really kind of clever real originals in terms of their in terms of their concept i love Falongius which is a tribute oh, yeah. to both Thelonious Monk and Charles Mingus. Um, Western Rebellion is a great tune. Uh, and what I really love is that he included the tune Waltz on there, which is a tribute to the late trumpeter Wallace Roney, who was really one of the first casualties in jazz of COVID-19. So again, as we look back on the timeline we cut the tree trunk down for jazz you know years from now we're going to see one of the rings is a little different because of COVID-19 it, it impacted the music there's no way to deny that um and you know in a lot of ways for the better um we saw some beautiful albums come out of this recorded during COVID-19 um yeah. that came out of this this hardship so yeah that does it for our list for November 2020 these are 10 albums you should definitely know about um go ahead and uh, like stream them on your favorite streaming service or now's the time especially to purchase them from the artists um you yeah. know during these tough times we often turn to artists to help get us through them so let's you know quite literally pay them back um by purchasing their albums purchasing the merch let's do what we can uh to support our artists all right matt yeah. that will do it for right. today's episode thanks for uh joining me yeah. for walking us through the list it's been a pleasure, Brian. Are we going to do something else to, tomorrow? Is this something scheduled oh, that we yes. want to plug? Thanks for reminding me, Matt. Of course, we're going to continue our crate digging series. This is kind of we just yeah. search through memories record store on albums of a given theme. Tomorrow's theme is Disney. All right. Disney. Wow. Disney. Jazz and Disney. I've got uh, who doesn't love Disney? I've got two young children. So it's constantly Disney throughout the house. Um, and I'm hoping to bring some jazz to it. So we'll be sharing ideas of our favorite jazz and Disney albums. And we invite you to do the same on this very yeah. YouTube page and later when we post it on the Facebook page. But thank you for watching, everybody who watched along with us. And uh, yeah. Again, sign up on jazzes.com. We are running that November digital issue featuring Russell Ferrante of the Yellow Jackets. Next month, we will be mailing to subscribers our winter 2020 uh, issue, which is all about jazz in the movies. It is a beautiful, if that if you love that marriage of jazz in the mu movies as much as I do and as much as I know Matt Micucci does, uh, you're going to want to check out this issue interviews with jazz artists about their favorite movies interviews with terrence blanchard who has kind of become jazz's you know most iconic film scorer we chat with seth mcfarlane you know from tv's family guy and ted uh about his new album which is very much in that uh rat pack frank sinatra crooner vein it's a really cool album i'm super That's proud cool. of it and yeah if you two are a jazz and film buff sign up for a subscription on our website That'll do, do it. it for do it. That's right. That'll do it uh, <laughs> for today, Matt. Uh, I will see you tomorrow, tomorrow as we dissect jazz and Disney. 
So, so long. All right. Everyone. So long, everybody. Bye bye now.